we got the wood processing a little bit out of the way here. Um, when it comes to other stuff like carving, um, how do, how would it perform? And I actually, although um, I did a little bit of a reference to to all kind of other stuff, camp chores like even food preparation before. Um, I'm not gonna bring any kind of steaks out here on my chopping block and and show you that stuff. However, um, when it comes to to carving and crafting. I think a spoon and chopping out a spoon is, is still always a great um, testimony basically of the capability of an axe and uh, I understand at this point that you, you could bring up the point that any axe and any chopping tool um, even a machete would be probably able to, to do this and that but um, I have to argue against first of all that there is a difference in the quality and especially the the quality time you're spending on working with a certain tool so of course I can get it done with a machete and I can get it done with this and that but it's for me a lot about the experience and, and the fun um, doing something um, on the other hand um, you know with that kind of argument I could bring all kind of kitchen knives or whatever to the woods just in order to have any kind of cutting tool and I, I think still that, that the reason why we're doing all of this all leather gear like we're talking about gear a lot and everything is that we just really love the, the looks and the feels of handmade and um, historic more or less historic um, tools it's just connecting with something within us so um, that's how I try to derail that argument however let's get back to the spoon um, I, I had a cherry blank of a very dry piece of cherry lying in the snow here for a few weeks on purpose just in order to make it carvable again and I also have a video about this kind of technique up on my channel calling reviving um, car um, green wood for carving so I, I just traced a little um, spoon on here on this piece of cherry and I'm just um, seeing this is still very hard stable. Now I'm, I find myself to chop a lot more with the straight handle than actually slicing but if I concentrate on it a little bit more and keep the, the knob with the handle end down, even with this handle here I'm actually able to slice quite well. This chopping block here is actually not a very good example of how your chopping block should be. There you go, a little bit of shimmy and there you go. Okay. I really like how this thing bites and it re really makes me reconsider um, the convex grind for carving axes, I gotta be honest. It really makes me consider convex grinds for um, carving axes again. Although we have a convex grind that maybe has a little bit of a more round bevel, so it's not as direct very often, knowing that the bevel is going a certain angle and I can really carve along the bevel. Um, it's still very, very nice to use um, and efficient. This is very hard wood. I have a little bit more blow-offs than usually, just a little bit more, but as soon as I'm getting used to this, this would be a very efficient, very, very compact and handy carving axe. Folks, thank you very much for watching. I know this was a little bit of a longer video, but there was a lot to say about this axe in my opinion. Um, it's just efficient and it's beautiful in so many different ways. It's a very, very interesting design that is absolutely um, proved by, by time and all kind of different cultures and chores. Um, so at this point, um, I'm sorry if the videos are very long. Um, very often I'm just getting carried away into some argument, something like that, that I th think is um, important to mention. but at the end of the day, I just really love making these videos and talking about um, a very underrated tool that is uh, maybe just represented in one very similar way all the time and I try to represent maybe a little bit of a different aspect. Um, so just again, this is the Finn by Landwerke Forge from Denmark. The blacksmith is called Hans-Peter Knudsen 
um, and I've been working with him for quite a while now and I really really appreciate his input and his help and him donating these axes. Folks, thank you very much for tuning in as always. Um, thank you very much for the support and all the comments. Um, I think these days you always get asked to subscribe, subscribe for a channel and like and share the videos. But I think the reason is really that we're putting quite a lot of time not only into making a, an idea, acquiring whatever tools um, is necessary, um, coming up with the concept and then um, going about filming and editing the videos um, for, for all kind of different reasons. But one reason is definitely that we have a lot of passion for whatever we're talking about, whatever video it is that you're watching. Um, so if you would like to subscribe right here, um, that would be make it a lot more worthwhile for me making these things and uh, justifying the time I'm putting into it. However, um, thank you very much for tuning in into another Woodsman's Finest Carving X Series episode. Um, you guys take care.